What's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Maxwell Cooper from Da Vinci Academy, and welcome back to another episode of Da Vinci Cases, Inside the Boards Edition. Inside the Boards is a medical education podcast platform that we've teamed up with to bring you a new series of video and audio clinical cases. Dr. Patrick Beeman from Inside the Boards and I will be walking you through these cases together, highlighting question dissection tips and how to apply concepts towards finding the correct answer. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Da Vinci Cases Inside the Boards. Uh, we have our uh, fourth case here for you for pathology, and I'm um, here with Patrick Beeman from Inside the Boards and uh, Maxwell Cooper from Da Vinci Academy, and we're happy to be uh, walking you through another case here. So for this case, we've got a 43-year-old woman, so a middle-aged woman, with a past medical history significant for diabetes mellitus type 2. And she presents the emergency room with severe left-sided back pain, nausea, vomiting, chills that all began three hours ago. So it's a pretty acute presentation. Um, this is a lady who's pretty sick. Uh, reading on here, the patient has been experiencing painful urination for the past five days. So she's been experiencing you know, this painful urination, and then all of a sudden on day five, here she's now experiencing these severe symptoms of left-sided back pain, nausea, vomiting, chills. Uh, the thing that everyone kind of thinks about with painful urination is possibly UTI, um, especially at a middle-aged woman. But again, uh, there's some other things we'll consider as well as we move forward here. In the ER, her vitals are notable for fever, tachycardia, and hypotension. Uh, so those are relatively concerning. She has a fever with these uh, symptoms, meaning she may have some type of systemic infection, and then you throw in that she's tachycardic and hypotensive, you kind of, your your signals go up for, you know, definitely keep an eye out for if this is a patient's in sepsis or not. Uh, physical exam reveals left-sided flank tenderness, so that confirms what she's been complaining of. Uh, and then her serum labs are notable for an elevated white count. So that just kind of further confirms for us that she has, you know, some inflammatory process, likely an infection. And then her urine analysis is positive for white blood cells, leukocyte esterase, and nitrites. So we'll get into what the different urine analysis findings mean. Uh, but again, just in short, this also further confirms for us that she most likely has an infection somewhere along the urinary tract. And then the question is, which of the following is the most likely mechanism of this patient's pathology? And our answer choices are necrosis of renal tubular cells, decreased renal blood flow, malignancy of the bladder transitional epithelium and bladder affection, infection ascending up the ureter. So I'll turn it over to Patrick here to kind of give you a summary of the case and then being able to answer the, how to answer the question. Yep. So uh, just to reiterate the highlights, uh, to focus on here, our uh, patient is a middle-aged woman, diabetes type 2, so something um, that has renal consequences. Um, she's presenting with the uh, chief symptoms of painful urination of acute onset. Critically, this is associated with severe flank pain, nausea, vomiting, and chills, um, which should kind of prime you to think about a systemic process, um, which I'm sure we'll get into here in a second. Uh, she's got a fever on objective findings, uh, tachycardic hypotensive, um, and the exam, physical exam, confirms uh, flank, her flank pain by demonstrating tenderness to palpation on the left side. So the classic kind of phrase for that is costovertebral angle tenderness. Uh, that's worth remembering. Um, and then our lab findings, we've got uh, leukocytosis and then a urinalysis with white blood cells, uh, leukesterase, and nitrites, um, with nitrites um, especially suggesting a um, urinary tract infection with, uh, well, uh, we'll get into that too, I think, in a second. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism of this patient's pathology? So the correct answer here, going along with what I just said, is bladder infection ascending up the ureter. Um, so an as ascending urinary tract infection might be another way that could be uh, written. Um, 
and uh, I guess we'll move on and can kind of elucidate things here a little bit more um, in subsequent slides uh, for those of you who are watching along uh, with the video. So yeah, we'll briefly talk about uh, UTI. One thing uh, for those of you watching the video, what I, we have a kind of diagram of the urinary uh, system here with the kidneys, ureter, bladder, and then the urethra down here. Uh, so there's what's kind of classification based on anatomy, your lower UTI, which is in the bladder and the urethra, and then the upper UTI, which is uh, more in the ureters and then uh, particularly focused on the kidney. Uh, as far as, you know, a urinary tract infection is just an infection at any point along the urinary tract. And again, we do upper and lower risk factors are being female, uh, sexual intercourse, having an indwelling urinary catheter, because that can just serve as, as a nidus for infection, diabetes, because that can affect the immune system. Uh, and then as far as the symptoms go, it's you know, the kind of the classic ones are pelvic pain or dysuria, which is painful urination, which our patient has changes in urinary frequency. So if someone says they feel like they have to go to the bathroom much more often um, or having trouble getting to the bathroom on time, those can also be uh, caused by a UTI. Some of the bacterial causes and the USMLE likes to ask about these a lot. Um, e. coli, that's actually the most common. Uh, staph, Saprophyticus, Klebsiella, and then Proteus are all other common bugs as well. And then as far as the urinalis findings, um, you can see white blood cells, you can see bacteria, um, positive leukocyte esterase is, is definitely a, an indicator, and then nitrites um, can point towards gram-negative bacteria, uh, which our patient has all of these in their, uh, uh, in their urinalysis. So again, kind of further pointing towards a UTI. But the th issue with UTI is that it can develop uh, into an infection of the renal parenchyma, which is called pyelonephritis. Um, and so it's often the result, like I said, of a lower UTI ascending into the kidney. So what you have, as you can see in the diagram here, you have a lower UTI, and then it kind of ascends up the ureter like this, and then affects the renal parenchyma. Uh, it can also result, though, if you have, you know, uh, bacteremia. So it can, if you have uh, hematogenous spread of bacteria through the blood from another source and it gets into the kidney, that's another way you can get pyelonephritis as well. Um, some risk factors, again, all kind of all of the UTI risk factors, but then additionally, if you have an, an obstruction along here, um, kind of similar to when we were talking about. Uh, ascending cholangitis uh, in the biliary system, you know, anywhere in the body, if you have a blockage, it's what can result is a buildup of bacteria, and then that bacteria can ascend up a certain uh, lumen. The other thing is that you can, if you have vesicourethral reflux, which is where kind of you have dysfunction of that valve at the junction of the ureter and the bladder, and so you kind of have uh, refluxing or leaking of urine back from the bladder into the ureter. Uh, also, pregnancy can put you at risk for pilo as well. As far as the symptoms go, all the UTI symptoms I just mentioned, plus usually systemic symptoms. If it's just kind of your run-of-the-mill lower UTI in the bladder, you usually don't have these significant systemic symptoms. If someone has, you know, really bad fever, chills, they're nauseous, they're very, you know, essentially very sick, uh, that's going to be more uh, associated or make you suspicious for pyelonephritis like we see with our patient. And then in the urine analysis, what happens is, is that, you know, the nephron and the renal parenchyma get infected. So then you see a, a large white blood cell uh, response. And then so you have all these neutrophils in the, in the nephron and then the patient pees them out. And so then you pick them up on urine analysis. And what can happen is, is these white blood cells can clump together in the nephron and form what's called a cast, which is just essentially they're all kind of stuck together. And so you can see those, you know, plus or minus, see those with in your urinalysis as well. And then the way you treat pyelonephritis is you usually give antibiotics and then, you know, fluids and other things if, if you need to. So now we'll come back to question here uh, and kind of go through the, the answer choices and what, what, what other corresponding pathology each of these answer choices corresponds to. So choice A is necrosis of the renal tubular cells, which is the pathologic process uh, describing acute tubular necrosis or ATN. So this is a result of ischemia um, or toxic injury to uh, the renal parenchyma 
which will result ultimately in death of the nephrons. And with this, you'll see compromise of kidney function uh, indicated by an increase in serum creatinine, um, you know, acute kin kidney injury, in other words, uh, which you tend not really to see with pyelonephritis. Um, you can also classically with ATN, this is very much worth remembering, see muddy brown casts on microscopic urinalysis and an increased fractional excretion of sodium. Uh, I, I don't know what would be the best way then uh, to kind of explain that. I guess if you have um, a loss of your uh, functional nephrons um, due to their uh, uh, death, cell death, then you're not going to be as it, uh, efficient as uh, at processing uh, sodium. And so you're um, going to be essentially spilling out sodium rather than reabsorbing it appropriately from the proximal uh, yeah. tubule. Okay. Proximal convoluted right. tubule. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, whew, glad I got that one. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, I am a board-certified OBGYN, 10 years out of uh, med school, so um, I still vaguely remember some of this for testing purposes, but you do not want me explaining uh, the hardcore pathophysiology of um, a lot of uh, uh, some of these findings of the uh, renal system, although I do deal with pyelonephritis fairly frequently. All right, next up, choice B, decreased renal blood flow. So in this situation, you're going to see AKI um, as indicated by, again, increased serum creatinine. Um, but this is uh, a result of um, uh, something like hypotension, uh, renal artery stenosis, heart failure. Um, those would be three key um, things to remember, three causes to remember. Um, in this situation, uh, it's probably conceptually or heuristically uh, best to think about it as if you don't have as much blood going to the kidney, then you're not going to have as much sodium going to the kidney um, for processing. So you'll have a decreased uh, fractional excretion of sodium, FENA. Um, and that, I think, is probably more heuristic to help you remember um, re remember that. Um, and then being a pre-renal cause... Uh, you'll see an increase in the BUN to creatinine ratio, which I believe should be uh, greater than 20 to 1. Yeah, yeah, greater than 20 to 1. Yeah, and the only thing I would add to the FENA is also, and usually, especially these types of cases like hypotension, especially renal artery stenosis, heart failure, is you're going to have an increase in aldosterone. So you're going to be significantly increasing uh, reabsorption of sodium. So again, you're not going to be, in versus the case of ATN, you're not going to be spilling out much sodium at all because your body's trying to conserve, cons conserve, you know, fluid volume. So that's the other reason you would see, in addition to what Patrick was mentioning, the low blood flow, um, you would see a decreased FENA as well. And then the final distractor was malignancy of the bladder transitional epithelium. So uh, this one is describing a transitional cell carcinoma uh, of the bladder which is less likely here for a couple reasons. One, uh, not the right age. You're going to see patients older than like 60, more of uh, an older adult population that's going to be affected by transitional cell carcinoma. Classic presentation is painless hematuria. Um, and something worth remembering on this note for testing purposes would be exposure to vinyl chloride um, and some other environmental toxins uh, is a risk factor for uh, bladder cancer. Um, I don't know if it's worth mentioning. Um, uh, no, it's probably not. But uh, <laughs> just tangentially... Um, I guess another answer choice we don't really have here is hemorrhagic cystitis, a classic finding in people who are treated with um, um, cyclophosphamide. And the 
uh, antidote or, or treatment for that is mesna. Um, seems to show up a lot on exams. So just throwing that out there since we're kind of talking about cancer. Hemorrhagic cystitis is not the same as transitional cell carcinoma, uh, but it is seen in cancer uh, malignant states um, when treated with cyclophosphamide. So bonus. Uh, and then our um, correct answer choice is a bladder infection ascending up the ureter, choice D. Um, so this is the most common method that bacteria access the upper tract um, through ascending from the urethra. And, uh, you know, a recent history of UTI, like a uncomplicated UTI, just you're straight up, I have pain when I pee, uh, frequency, urgency, uh, maybe the, the patient comes in and had antibiotics, but uh, they they uh, didn't improve clinically or um, have a history of 10 to 14 days of di you know dysuria frequency urgency. Um, your garden variety lower tract UTI is not going to stick around that long, um, and if it if it does, you're going to be set up for a pyelonephritis picture with. Um, you know, uh, you can you can think. I like what you said about stasis or you know the risk factors for pylo. Uh, I think you can group a lot of them conceptually into whatever mechanically um, affects the ability of urine to get from the kidney through the ureter to the bladder and then out. Um, uh, so pregnancy is going to, you know, press on the ureter as the uterus gets bigger, but also think in that, uh, OBGYN kind of category, uh, uh, ovarian cancers, large, bulky, symptomatic, you know, fibroid uteri, um, and these patients come in, like we've said, uh, severe flank pain would be the chief symptom, and I would say the unique uh, finding on physical exam to remember for pyelonephritis is costovertebral angle tenderness, and you will expect to see findings consistent with a urinary tract infection generally on your laboratory testing. So yeah, everybody, that's uh, that's what we got for you this week uh, for this renal pathology case. So yeah, we got a case of uh, acute pyelonephritis on what was previously an uncomplicated uh, lower tract, lower urinary tract infection, uh, and a result of bladder infection ascending up the ureter. Thank you for watching this video from this new collaboration between Da Vinci Academy and Inside the Boards. Again, to listen to the audio, you can go to the Inside the Boards platform or wherever you listen to podcasts. Again, to see that all the Da Vinci Academy and Inside the Boards have to offer. Be sure to click the links in the description below. Thank you again for watching.